so, okay, so you've just started working on a plan. You're trying to implement a different procedure that will improve and make production more efficient. However, the plant workers who have been there for many years tell you they've tried this method before and it doesn't work well and that they should just stick with the method they currently use. How would you approach this situation? Okay. So first of all, thank you, Kaylee. You've done a great job so far. <laughs> so my name is James Albano, and so the question <coughs> basically revolves around how can you help make change even if the change has already been tried and how can you co convince people uh, so I think this question centers around leadership. Um, so I guess the first step would be in leadership is to listen. So why has this not worked before? Uh, if it hasn't worked and you think it's going to work now, there must have been some sort of change that you're making then. So I think illustrating that point um, is, is the first step. Secondly, uh, I think in, in leading, you have to make sure people are on board and, and so you talk to the higher ups, the most experienced people, and you basically say, hey, I need you on my side here, otherwise change isn't going to get done. And then thirdly, make sure they know why you're trying to make the change. Um, I think oftentimes, especially when you're in a position where either you know more or you think you know more, it can be easy just to say, okay, we want to make this change and you don't really need to know why. We just want to make this change. And that's probably not a good thing to do. I, I know I've experienced it in work um, and in the classroom. Uh, whether it be teachers or other, other students. Um, so I think showing why you actually need to make the change and how it's going to help is, is the way to go. Um, so that would be my first step. Uh, the second step would be making sure that you can safely uh, implement it. And I think that's probably always a priority. Um, and just, if you need to, talk to other peers. If, if I'm new to this plant, you can probably talk to who had formerly worked in this plant. Um, so I think all of this combined would be the way to, to implement the process. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, Timmy? Uh, you said you experienced this at work. Uh, was that your time at Dow Chemical? Or, uh, and, and if so, well, can you give us the example? Yeah, so <laughs> I experienced it. Um, the time I was thinking about was whenever I was working in the HVAC uh, with a company called Standard Engineering. And I had to change one of the like values for R or whatever when trying to calculate the cooling load. I know you, you've done HVAC too, so it's probably something that resonates with you. Uh, and I had no clue why I was doing it, and it kind of didn't make sense. Um, so I just kind of had to go with it and then look up later. Another example was in school. Uh, whenever <laughs> the other day when I was in the manufacturing processes lab, uh -huh. I was confused about why we were making a certain cut a certain way. Um, and so the teacher is just like, well, just, just do it this way, just do it this way. And I think with that kind of negative attitude, you can get to a position where people don't want to ask questions. I think that can be dangerous, because when you don't ask questions, it's when you don't learn. Thanks, Tim. Sam? So what if you're talking to the people, the people doubting the, the change, saying we've already done it, oh, yeah. but they still don't convince you that your idea won't work? They don't convince me that my idea will Right, work. so they're telling you, we tried this before, it failed, we did it, blah, 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 they explained it to you what they did, but you're still like not convinced because in your head it's, it's going to work. I do right. think that there comes a point where you say, like, this is my responsibility, like I'm in charge. That, that point is far down the line, right? But there comes a point where you say, yeah, this is my, if, I, if it's a, a unit that I own, I own this unit, like, you know, you're in charge of it. Um, so, they can come to a point, and I think people will be frustrated with that, but if they see that it works, then you're going to build respect. Uh, you just have to be pretty doggone sure that it's going to work at that point. That's a good point. Good question. Andrew? Um, my question is uh, kind of pertinent, I guess, to all of, all of us right now, where we are in our careers, which okay. is not very much of anywhere. Um, <laughs> would your answer change if you were in an intern position as opposed to like, a, like an actual position? So like, like, take it back to like your time at um, Dow Chemical, where you work. Yes, yeah. um, when I worked at the Dow Chemical. Like, at, at such a big and developed company like that, um, if you maybe made a suggestion uh, and you were shut down pretty quick, would you kind of just drop it right there? So, as an intern, I mean. I think your question revolves less around position and more about confidence. So if I'm confident that I'm gonna work, I don't think it matters whether um, I'm an intern or whether I'm a, a full-time engineer. So in my virtual co-op that I did with Dow Chemical, 
Um, I was working on like an Excel spreadsheet and uh, I was working with macros and the, the person kept on wanting, my boss kept on wanting me to go one route. Uh, but I knew the route wouldn't work and so, no. That was something I felt confident with so I kept on doing what I was doing and he was satisfied with the results. And so I don't think position matters there. I think if you, if you say I really don't know what I'm talking about, well then yeah, you're probably inclined to drop it. But, um, but I think that's fair to know, to know when when you know what you're talking about and when you, you really don't. <laughs> that's a good question. Thanks, Andrew. I have a question. Yes. So a lot of these field workers, plant workers, operators we come into contact with have been working at the same job for 20 plus years, some even 30 plus years. So I guess my question is, is how, how much do you value their opinion? Because even though they're not engineers by trade, they certainly know usually way more than an engineer right out of school. So like, what do you think they're opinion is worth? Oh, their opinion is absolutely like immensely valued. But I think perspective is also important. Um, to be fair, I think, you know, if it's something, so an operator may say, look, we've done this for 25 years. And it can be frustrating whenever an engineer comes and says, well, actually, that's not the safest way to do it. Their opinion is valued, but you still have to go with the safest option. Uh, whenever you work at a big company, you have to be within certain rules. I was one time in a plant that had been recently um, recently brought in, so it was Heritage DuPont, and then it worked for Dow. And so the people there were not happy about the fact that they had to do things the way Dow did things. Um, but that doesn't, even though opinion needs to be listened to, um, it doesn't matter. But I find that as long as people feel, <laughs> as long as people feel that they've been listened to, it doesn't really matter <laughs> if their opinion is always followed. They just want to feel like they have a voice. Great point. Thank you. Right. Thanks, guys.